Summary of Per Goriot by Honoré de Balzac Madame Vacher, a widow, has been running a shabby but decent boarding house in a quiet, low-class part of Paris for 30 years. Seven people are living there during the winter of 1819. There is an idealistic young law student named Eugène de Rastignac, an elderly couple called Mademoiselle Micanot and Monsieur Poiret who look very small, a young woman named Victorine Telefer who has been kicked out of her family and her guardian, Madame Couture, a mysterious but happy 40-year-old man named Vautrin, and a retired pasta maker known as Père Goriot. Goriot gets in trouble with everyone. His job was successful, but within his first couple of years at the Maison Vacher, both his wealth and his looks get worse. The others think Goriot is a crook who's wasted his money on lovers when they see stylish young women visiting him. Rastignac wants to become a famous lawyer so that he can support his large family, whose estate in the provinces is having trouble. Besides studying law, he knows he needs to make a name for himself in Parisian society. So, his aunt sets up a meeting between him and Madame la Vicomtesse de Buzant, a rich cousin who lives far away. At the ball for the Vicomtesse, Rastignac is interested in a pretty young woman named Madame Anastasie de Ristad and asks to be able to talk to her. Rastignac sees his friend Goriot just leaving when he goes to see Madame de Ristad. But when Rastignac says Per Goriot during an already awkward visit, he does something wrong that no one can understand, and he leaves feeling embarrassed. When Rastignac feels down, he goes to see Madame de Buzant and begs her to help him figure out how to get along in Paris's crazy social scene. His cousin tells him that Madame de Ristaud is Goriot's daughter and that she and her sister, Madame Delphine de Nucingen, are not allowed to see him by their men. Goriot spent all of his money making sure that his girls could marry rich people who would be good for them in society. But after that, Goriot's daughters started to feel bad around him and would only visit him in secret when they needed money. Madame de Buzant also tells Rastignac that if he wants to do well in society, he should get involved with a rich young woman but never show real feelings for her. She says that people should be seen as things that can be used and then left behind. Delphine de Nucingen is a good choice because she wants to fit in so badly. Rastignac will be liked by Delphine and everyone else if he presents her to Madame de Buzant. Back at the boarding house, Vautrin, Rastignac's roommate, talks to him one-on-one -on -one and gives him more advice. He says that people can only do two things in life, follow the rules or rebel. He tells Rastignac that it will take decades to get a job and get married the normal way. If Rastignac really wants to get ahead, he should do what most people in Paris do, which is to cut deals. In return for a share of the dowry as payment, he offers to find Rastignac a wealthy wife. In his speech, he says that Victorine loves Rastignac and that she would get a lot of money if her brother died. Vautrin can make this happen. He says that this way of doing things isn't ethically worse than the more subtle concessions Rastignac will have to make as a normal lawyer. But Rastignac turns down the offer because he is scared. Rastignac meets Madame de Nucingen for the first time when he goes to the theater with Madame de Buzant. He falls in love with her right away. He also becomes friends with Goriot, who is eager for any news about his neglected girls, whom he loves from afar. Not long after, Rastignac starts getting requests to hang out with Delphine de Nucingen. For example, she uses Rastignac to get money when she's having trouble, just like she does with her father. She makes him gamble to win money for her. She tells him that most Parisian women, despite how they look, are always broke and have to make all kinds of moral choices because of it. Even though Rastignac knows this, he becomes more and more interested in Delphine's fancy life, until he runs out of money for basic needs and stops studying. He also starts to really like her, even though that wasn't what he had planned. He still doesn't like Vautrin's offer, but he can't help but play with Victorine because he's desperate. At the same time, a detective named Monsieur Gondoro approaches Poiret and Mademoiselle Micanot, two senior boarders who don't stand out. He tells them that Vautrin is actually Jacques Collin, also known as Death Dodger, a criminal mastermind and escaped prisoner. He offers a big prize if they help him drug Vautrin to prove who he is. While this plan is being carried out, Vautrin starts his own, 
setting up a fight that will kill Victorine's brother. Rastignac makes up his mind to tell Victorine's family that night. However, Vautrin thinks he is up to no good and adds drugs to Rastignac's wine to make him fall asleep, losing his chance. The next morning, Mademoiselle Micano adds drugs to Vautrin's coffee just before the horrified residents of the boarding house find out that Victorine's brother was killed in the fight. Mademoiselle Micano and Poirot find the criminal's mark on Vautrin's shoulder after he drinks his coffee and passes out. This proves that he is Death Dodger and informs Gondro's police force. Vautrin is caught that night, which shocks the other people who live there. After these events, Rastignac is upset, but he finds comfort in the flat that Delphine and Goriot have surprised him with by furnishing it. He also gets Delphine an invitation to Madame de Buzin's upcoming ball and offers Goriot a room above his new apartment, which will finally put him close to one of his daughters. It looks like everyone will get what they want and everything will work out well. While Rastignac and Goriot are getting ready to leave the boarding house, Delphine comes to see Goriot and says she is broke because her husband is pressuring her to leave because she is seeing Rastignac. Pretty soon after, Anastasie shows up. She's in trouble because she sold the Daristad diamonds to pay off Maxime's huge gambling bills. As the sisters fight, Goriot sees that they are both unhappy and that he can't make them happy. His health starts to get worse. Rastignac and Goriot use everything they have left to help the sisters get out of trouble, but Goriot dies the next night. At Madame de Buzin's ball that night, Rastignac tries to get Delphine to go see her sick father, but she won't admit how serious the situation is. At the same time, Madame de Buzin, who had been denying that her lover was getting married until the day of the ball, feels embarrassed by it and chooses to leave Parisian society and retire to the country keeping her emotional integrity. Rastignac says goodbye to his cousin with love. The next day, Goriot starts to fade quickly. The old man is cared for by Rastignac and his kind-hearted medical student friend Byanchin. Delphine and Anastasie both say no when Rastignac asks them to visit Goriot before it's too late, which shows that they don't really love him. In his last fight, Goriot laments that his girls have been unfaithful, and he finally seems to see his relationships with them for what they are. He dies, though, holding Rastignac and Byanchin because he thinks they are his children. He is fooled to the end. Rastignac and Byanchin spend their last few francs to make sure Goriot has a proper funeral. Goriot's daughters and sons-in-law don't offer any help, they only send their slaves to the funeral. Rastignac walks to the top of the graveyard hill after the service and looks out over Paris. At the same time that he knows the city is fake and crooked, he wants the easy pleasures it has to offer. It seems like he will keep trying to find a balance between social success and moral purity as he goes to eat with Delphine. About the author Honoré Balzac was the second of five children to be born into a French family that was considered to be of high social standing. As a kid, Balzac spent most of his time with a nurse or at boarding school. He and his siblings didn't get much attention from their parents. As a teen, he went to Paris to finish his education and studied law at the Sorbonne. In fact, Balzac was a poor law student in his early 20s in 1819, the same year that Père Goriot takes place. This makes him a lot like his character, Eugène de Rastignac. When Balzac finished his training to be a lawyer, he changed his mind and chose to become a writer instead. But it wasn't until 1829 that his first book, Le Dernier Chouin, came out. When a collection of his short stories came out in 1830, it made him more well-known in the intellectual world of Paris. Many of his books and short stories were put together in 17 volumes called La Comédie Humaine, which was meant to give a broad picture of French society. Balzac is seen as one of the founders of literary realism because of how well he wrote characters and how much attention he paid to detail. Balzac married Madame Evelyn Hanska, a Polish countess, in 1850. He died in Paris. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.